So this unit is called quadratic equations, and we're going to start off today by looking at what are called graphical solutions to quadratic equations. In a minute, uh, I'm going to be explaining the difference between what we call an equation in mathematics and a function, and although they're related, they're significantly different from each other in terms of their meaning. Most of this unit is dealing with solving equations. And we're going to be looking at graphical solutions to equations. We'll be looking at algebraic solutions as well, which are better, but algebraic solutions can be found in a number of different ways, one of which you already know how to do. So what we're going to be doing today is relating what's called the x-intercepts or zeros of the graph of a quadratic function to the solutions to the corresponding quadratic equation. So these are two different things. There's a quadratic function and there's a quadratic equation. And it's very important that you understand the difference between the two. That's going to lead us to the idea that you can solve an equation by looking at a function. Think about what I'm saying here. An equation is something written on paper with maybe x's in it, and you have to find the value of x or the values of x that make that equation true. Here is an equation. That's an equation. It's not quadratic. It happens to be linear. And what I'm telling you is that you can graph a function somehow so that you can determine the equation's solutions by looking at the graph of the function. The, the difficulty in understanding what's going on here is this equation doesn't have any y's. So how do we create a function? And that's something we're going to be talking about. And then we're going to be talking about solutions to quadratic equations having either none, one, or two solutions. So to begin with, some terminology. y equals x squared minus x minus 6 is an example of what we call a quadratic function. Why is it called a function? It's deeper than this, but it's called a function basically because it has a connection between x and y, and you can graph it. I could make a table of values here and graph this. Or I could use my knowledge gained from the previous unit and complete the square of this to locate the vertex and sketch it that way. But it is a graph because it contains x and y. However, x squared minus x minus 6 is not a quadratic function. It's a quadratic equation. And you may think the difference is unimportant, but it's crucial. One of these is called a function because it's y equals, and the other is called an equation because it's not y equals. It happens to be 0 equals. And I hope, I hope, you see that there's a connection between these two. The quadratic expression in the function, in terms of x, is the same as the quadratic expression in the equation, in terms of x. But they're not the same thing. One's a function, one's an equation. To solve an equation means you're going to find the values for the variable that make the equation true, and the variable is often x. So if I asked you to solve this equation, you really don't know how to do it. You don't. You can't rearrange that for x. You haven't been taught that yet. But with a little bit of trial and error, you could probably find the solutions. Can you confirm that I believe 3 is a solution? If you were to put 3 in for x, it would be a true statement. Yes, Georgia? OK. Can you confirm that if you put in negative 2? And you want to be careful here that when you put negative 2 into your calculator, when you square that negative 2, it needs to be in brackets. I would argue that maybe you don't even need to put it into your calculator. But I believe negative 2 will make that 0 as well. Just to show that to you on paper, negative 2 quantity squared minus negative 2 minus 6. That gives me 4 plus 2 minus 6 gives me 0. So there are two solutions to that quadratic equation. It probably shouldn't surprise you that there are two solutions because it's quadratic. Okay. The solutions to an equation are called the roots of the solution. So, the roots of the equation, rather. So, when I set up here that for this equation, x equals 3 and x equals negative 2 were solutions, from now on, when you see the word root, you mean solution in your head. So, those are the roots of that equation. 
Use your graphing calculator to determine the values of the two x-intercepts of this function. That's pretty easy. We've done this already. And at some point today, each and every one of you will come to a conclusion that I'm teaching you something new that's not really new. It's, it's kind of the same thing. Okay. We're just using different terminology. So I can put in this function and I can go zoom 6. And a reminder to calculate an x-intercept on your calculator or to find it, you go second trace to get into the calculate menu and you choose 0. Well, this is interesting. We're choosing 0. The function's x-intercepts are going to be found by choosing 0 in this menu. And that's because what we're doing is we're finding a value of x that makes this expression 0. Okay. So we choose that, we go to the left of this, we hit enter, we go to the right, we hit enter again and again, and you end up with negative 2. So one of the x-intercepts is x equals negative 2. <coughs> Can you go ahead and find the other x-intercept for me? I believe it's 3. Okay. So those are x-intercepts of this function. Substitute the value for the x-intercepts that we got into this quadratic equation. Now, we've already kind of done this, but I'm going to do it officially here. For the x-intercept of negative 2, it's negative 2 quantity squared minus negative 2 minus 6. And what we get is 0. And for 3, we're going to have 3 quantity squared minus 3 minus 6, and that's 9 minus 3 minus 6, which is 0 as well. What do you notice and explain? Well, the roots of x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0 are the same as the x-intercepts of y equals x squared minus x minus 6. That's what we notice. We notice that the roots of the equation and the x-intercepts or zeros of the function are the same number. So these are called solutions or roots, and they refer to something to do with an equation. So the roots or solutions to the equation are the same as the x-intercepts or zeros of the corresponding function. And sometimes in math you need to be familiar with the language in order to do the math, and this is part of it. However, because these numbers for the zeros are the same as the numbers for the roots, we occasionally just interchange the words. Okay. Why is this? Why are the zeros of this function the same as the solutions to that equation? Well, the answer is a zero makes y equal to 0. It makes the whole thing equal to 0. That's why when you go to your calculate menu, you choose 0. You're finding a value of x that makes the thing 0. Or, if you like, an x-intercept, by definition, has y equals 0, right? If I said find the x-intercepts, that's what you do. You change y to 0. But when you do that, and you know, you can't do what I'm going to show you up here, but I think you'll get my drift. When you change the y to a 0, what is it you're left with? You're left with this equation. So they have to be the same numbers because on the one hand, with the equation, it's a value of x that makes this thing 0. On the other hand, with the function, it's a value of x that makes 
why zero, but why is this thing? And, and the explanation is awkward because we keep kind of running around saying the same thing depending on whether we're talking about the graph of the function or the written equation. And, you know, you can decide what you need to write down or don't need to write down for the explanation, but I want to go back and take a look at something that I wrote over here. Remember I wrote uh, 3x plus 12 equals zero? Well, we would be doing students a disservice if we never explained to them how to solve that on paper, not in, an, not in a concrete way, but in an abstract way. You know, you can solve this maybe with algebra tiles or models or stuff, but we teach you this, right? Minus 12, minus 12, 3x equals negative 12. Are you with me on that? And then we divide both sides by 3, divide both sides by 3, and you get x equals negative 4. Now imagine a world in which you've never been taught that. But what you've been taught instead, and you have no idea why anything works, is that you can solve this equation by graphing this function and finding the x-intercepts. So back in junior high or whenever, you still haven't been taught about abstract rearranging or algebra, Somebody hands you one of these and says, this is a magical device that will find a value of x to make something true. And you go, OK, show me how to use it. Well, graph, remember, you're not looking at the y equals. That doesn't exist in the equation. The equation that you're solving is this. But your teacher says, well, all you do is you pick this thing up, and you hit the y key, and you go, well, why do I do that? Just never mind. Just do it, right? <laughs> And you go, well, 3x plus 12. And they go, OK, now what? And you go, well, you go zoom 6. Why? I don't know. Just do it. And now you're going to find out that where that line that just was drawn intersects the x-axis. And you teach them how to do all of this. You go 0, go to the left, go to the right. And there's the answer. In other words, it doesn't have to be quadratic. It can be any equation that you want to solve. This will work. <clears throat> As I said, this is not what we would teach students because it's not teaching them any math, really. It's just teaching them a way that will work. So, ah, we've already explained it. Solve each quadratic equation by graphing. Now, is there a way for you to solve this without graphing it? Yes, but we're not going to worry about that today. It'll either be tomorrow or the next day, depending on the question we're working on. So the first thing you do is you say, forget about the equation. I want to graph y equals 3x squared minus 10x plus 8, and I want to find the x-intercepts. And there will be, well, there may not be two of them, but... Now, do you get my drift when I say I'm not going to explain why this works every time? You're simply going to find the x-intercepts and say that's the solution to the equation. We've already done the explanation in the warm-up. So we graph this. y equals 3x squared minus 10x plus 8. I think I'm still on zoom standard, so I'll just go graph. I can see there are two x-intercepts, and now is a time where we can learn how to use our calculator a little better. Um, when you find the x-intercepts, you're going to have to go to the left and the right of each one, right? And, and it's pretty tiny right now, and I don't, I don't know if I've ever shown you zoom box. I don't think I have. have you ever, how many of you have used zoom box? Uh, it's brilliant. It's not always perfect. It's not always applicable, but in this case it is. You hit enter, you choose zoom box. And now you can see right in the center of my screen, there's a little blinky guy. I can move that wherever I want. And what I'm going to do, let me show this to you here first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a box around the region I want it to zoom in on. So if I create a box there and hit enter, what's going to happen is it will set up the window settings 
so that that box gets stretched out into the whole screen. What you do is you move the cursor to, let's say, the bottom left side of the box, maybe about there, and you hit enter, and then it's like this piece of elastic that you can stretch out. You can start in the top right if you want and hit enter and then stretch it down to the bottom left. It doesn't matter. And now when I hit enter, it's, it's a beautiful thing. If, as I say, it's applicable, I can really see the x-intercepts now. And I don't have to mess around with window settings or you know, crossing my fingers and hitting zoom in and hoping that it's going to work. Now I can go to my calculate menu and choose zero. Go to the left. Enter, go to the right, enter, hit enter a third time, and I get 1.3 repeating. Another feature of your calculator that I think is very useful that I don't know that we've used. Right now, when you look at that and you see it says, under the word zero, it says x equals. If I quit out of here and go to my home screen and hit my x key, I can bring up that number and not just to a few decimal places. It's got in the memory all of the decimals, which allows me, if I want to be a little bit lazy, and I do today, to just convert it to a fraction. So one of them is 4 thirds. And the other one, I think you can probably see on there. I think you can probably see on there that it's one. No, it's two. It's probably two. But we can confirm that. Here's a way you can confirm it. I have no doubt that everybody can go back and go zero and go left, right, and get it. But I think it's two. Would you agree it looks like it's at two? So we could go to our table and make sure that it's on independent being asked, just like we did with sequences and series and go to my table, by the way, 4 divided by 3, yep, makes it 0. 2 makes it 0. So the two solutions to the equation are x is equal to 2 and 4 thirds. And what I have written in red over here, that's not good enough. Don't, if I said, what are the solutions, and you wrote x-intercepts, what I would say to you is, what are you talking about x-intercepts? There's no y in the question. And I know that's being picky, but it's the way it is. Math is picky sometimes. Any questions with one? All right, 8p squared plus 18p minus 5. Oh, no, I don't have a p button on my calculator. Well... You guys are smart. You realize we're just going to use x, right? So we're going to graph y is equal to 8x squared plus 18x minus 5. And look at the x-intercepts. Now, I'm in that old window setting. If I go window... You can see that that happens to be the random, not random, that happens to be the minimum and maximum x and y's of my box that I created. So if I were to go graph, I don't know what I'll see. Probably nothing. Maybe something. I don't know. Nothing. So I have to remember to go zoom 6 again. And again, I think this lesson is just as much about the solutions to the equation as it is about using your calculator properly. You understand that this is a parabola that opens up, and we have an x-intercept here and here, yes? Could we go to the zero function right now and calculate by going left, right, and enter? Yes. I like a better picture, though. I'm guessing, remember, when you go zoom 6, it goes from, ne goes from negative 10 to 10, and I'm guessing that the vertex is down maybe somewhere between negative 20 and negative 50. I don't know. I can't tell. So I am going to change my window setting manually. We've done this before. I'm going to go down to negative 40. And I can see that 
all of this stuff over here is not telling me anything, and all of the stuff over here is not telling me anything. So I'm going to change my X window settings from about negative 5 to 2, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, that's a little better. I'm just going to make sure everybody's okay out there. That's a little bit better. So now we're going to find the x-intercepts. Go to the Calculate menu and choose 0. Scroll to the left. Hit Enter. To the right, hit Enter, hit Enter. And you get negative 2.5, which I would hope that by the time you get to math 20-1, you know is negative 5 over 2. Okay. But if you don't, you can quit out of here. Hit X. Math, Enter, Enter. There's a time to be lazy and a time not to be lazy. It's okay to be lazy here. Okay, we're, I mean, after all, we're kind of at the height of laziness because we're using a graphing calculator to solve an equation. We're not doing it algebraically. So one of our solutions is this number here, 5 over 2, negative 5 over 2. The other, I'm guessing, is going to be 0.25. Now, I can tell it's going to be 0.25 by looking at the equation and not the graph, and that's something you will learn eventually. So 0.25, which, of course, is 1 quarter. So here are our two solutions. This, I wouldn't even say is work. This is not work that you're showing. You would never solve any equation graphically for a written type of question. Any questions with B? All right. 9x squared plus 7x minus 2. Equals 0. Just based on how we set this up with the warm-up, in order for this x-intercept thing to work, we need to zero the equation. Well, I'm not even going to write down y equals. Let's just go at it here. Uh, 9x squared plus 7x minus 2. So that, that equals 2 became minus 2 because I subtracted 2 from both sides. Well, we'll go zoom standard again. Uh, I think this is a candidate for zoom box. I think it's simpler rather than, I mean, I could manually go from negative 2 to, say, 1 and negative 4 to 2 or something, but in retrospect, I probably would have because I think it would have been quicker, but this is a nice kind of surefire way of getting it. I'm going to give everybody a minute here and find the two x-intercepts. Which will be the two solutions. get to the point where you've converted that second x-intercept into a fraction, it should have been 0.2 repeating. Okay. And there's, by the way, there's a connection here between the numbers in the solutions and the numbers in the equation. You don't know what the connection is. Don't automatically make the assumption that one of your solutions will always be C divided by A multiplied by negative 1. It doesn't work that way. Let's try one more. 4x squared minus 20x plus 25 equals 0.
So zeroing the equation is helpful because we're going to be finding zeros of the function. We got 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. I didn't go zoom standard. I should do that. Zoom standard. And we have that. Now, see, we run into, and I'm including this example for a reason, because we run into a situation where without having the algebra skills, you can't be sure of something here. If you had algebra skills that you're going to be taught in this unit, then you would look at that and you'd probably do something algebraically just to confirm your suspicion. And the suspicion is, because when you go zoom box, when you go zoom box, It looks as though it just touches, okay? But you can't be sure. Maybe it goes below. Maybe it cuts across the x-axis and goes below and then back up. But it's so f such a tiny amount below that we have to zoom in more. Well, let me save you the suspense. You could zoom in all you want. You're never going to see it cross because it doesn't. And there's no, there's no real way right now for you to confirm this. There's a way for you to kind of not confirm 100%, but give you a rough idea that it's only one spot, and I'll show it to you. Let's see if zero works in this circumstance. So zero, well, that's definitely to the left is over here. And by the way, you understand your calculator is very primitive, right? Like watch, watch my little cursor as I scroll to the right. Do you see how it goes in a horizontal line? You know it doesn't, right? It, it can't because it's a parabola. There's no flat part to it. But I'm going to say that's to the right of it, and I'm going to go to the left of it. I don't know. Is it going to work? It does. It says now 2.5000015. So I think your immediate suspicion is it's actually 2.5. Okay. I'm not sure what's going to happen if we quit out of here and choose X. It's not going to turn out well for us. But what we can do is confirm by going to our table that 2.5 gives us exactly 0. So it's 2.5. Now, there's a way for you to kind of confirm your suspicions that it's just touching the x-axis there, which means it goes up on both sides. And it's to do this. 2.500001. If it goes below 2.5, then we would, below 0 rather at that 2.5, then we would get something that is 0. And I think what's happening here is it's so close to 0 that your calculator is just saying 0. As I said, there's no way for you to confirm that it's the only x-intercept. Um, I'm trying to decide whether I should tell you why or not just yet. So that's 5 over 2, correct? You know how we could confirm that it is? If this is true, if this is true, then this parabola has a vertex at 2.5 comma 0, correct? We can find the coordinates of the vertex. We can complete the square. So I'm going to take 4 out of the first two terms. And I'm going to imagine that it's y, because I'm talking about a graph here. Do you agree that when I take 4 out of 4x squared, it's just x squared? And 4 out of 20x is 5x? Okay, so what number do I add? I take half of negative 5 and square it, which gives me 25 quarters. And then I have to multiply these two numbers together, and that gives me 25.
which means I have to subtract 25. What does that give me? It gives me y is equal to 4 times x minus 5 halves, 5 halves, plus nothing. Right? So the vertex is at that point. It doesn't go below. All right, let's take a look at the next question. Solve each quadratic equation expressing your answer to two decimal places. How is this different? Well, I, I want to show something to you before we do this. And you don't need to worry about why. I just want to introduce you to this idea so you get used to seeing it. In this question, this is a b is negative 10 and c is 8, correct? I want you very carefully on your calculator, including the negatives, to calculate what b squared minus 4ac is. So I want you to take negative 10 squared minus 4 times 3 times 8. I want to say you're going to get 4. Okay. The value of b squared minus 4ac for this first equation is 4. I would like you to calculate b squared minus 4ac here. Include your negatives. So you have to take 18 squared minus 4 times 8 times negative 5. Is 484 correct? Okay. So you get 484. Big deal. So what? Well, I'm getting there, okay? I am getting there. And this is going to be such a helpful tool. I would like you to calculate b squared minus 4ac for this. And you have to go with this version. It has to be equal to 0. So you know b squared minus 4ac. Finally, you know what to do. It has to be here. You should get zero here. Okay. All right. So let's come back to that in a bit. Turns out those numbers tell us something. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what just yet. Let's solve. Well, why don't we do the, while we're on the b squared minus 4ac kick, why don't we calculate b squared minus 4ac here? Twenty-eight? Oh, no, wrong. I could tell immediately. One seventy-two. Okay, let's solve this equation. Okay, what do we got here? 2x squared minus 10x minus 9. Zoom standard. I could resume, but I think I'm just going to go with this. 0, enter, enter. Enter, which is that number. And if I quit out of here and go math, enter. Whoops, and go x. Math, enter, enter. 
My calculator cannot convert it to a fraction. Now, the reason for that is this number is irrational, which means it's going to have square roots in there somewhere, which maybe shouldn't surprise you because it's quadratic. All right. Negative 95. 2x squared minus x plus 12. OK. Um, well, we know the y-intercept of this function is 12. Right? You know that c is the y-intercept. So let's look up higher. Let's go to our window settings and go up to 25. We also know it opens upward, right? Oh, well, there aren't any x-intercepts. That means there's no number in the universe that will make this equation equal to 0, that, that will make this true. So no solutions. You know where I'm going with this. Well, you know what I expect you to do here. Let's find a b squared minus 4ac. You need to zero this equation first. One sixty nine. Let's find the solutions. There's one of the solutions. Hmm, interesting. Do you get the same solution? Did I enter something wrong? Well, I sure did. Is that what you were going to tell me? I forgot my eight. We'll do that again. That's better. Um, zero. You get negative five eighths, and you also get one. Pretty sure you get one. Okay, we're, we're just about done here, but I want to make a really important point. And I can tell some of you are wondering, what's with the b squared minus 4ac? It's, we'll get there. One more, though, before I reveal it. It's going to be zero as well. How many of you suspect this is one of these cases where it just touches? You would be right. 
and its three halves. So here, <laughs> here's what I want you to think about right now. This is rational. These are rational, right? Negative 5 eighths and 1 are rational numbers, which means they can be written as fractions. This is not rational, obviously. Uh, this is not rational, right? We had another one there too, didn't we? I guess I didn't find the other one. Did somebody find that for me? It'll be two, four, it'll be five points something, I think. I'm going to guess it's 5.7787. So I know something you don't, but that's okay. The decimals on these will be the same. Not rational. And everything in number one was rational. So just think about this for a second. Here's my question. What do all of these numbers have in common? 4, which gave us rational. 484, which gave us rational. 121, which gave us rational. Uh, zero, which gave us rational. I think there was 169, which gave us rational. What do they have in common? Do you know common? Perfect squares. They're perfect squares. And that may not seem important to you right now, but it will be for tomorrow and moving forward. If b squared minus 4ac is a perfect square, then your solutions will be rational numbers. All right, let's move on. I think you get the gist of solving these graphically. Summarize the three different scenarios that can arise when solving something graphically. Well, looking at the graphs, a parabola can have two x-intercepts. A parabola can have no x-intercepts. Or a parabola can have one x-intercept. And there's other variations to this. These are just parabolas that open up. What does that mean? It means quadratic equations can have two solutions, one solution, or no solutions. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here. And you won't understand why this is the case until about a week from now. We had two equations in the first couple examples that had one solution, right? Because they came down and just touched. What was b squared minus 4ac for those? It was 0. If b squared minus 4ac is 0, you're going to get one solution. Did we have an example that had no solutions? What was b squared minus 4ac there? I think it was negative 95, wasn't it? It was negative. We'll talk about why this is the case, as I said, in about a week. But if b squared minus 4ac is 0, you're going to get just one solution. If it's negative, you don't get any. If it's positive, you will get two. One more thing. If b squared minus 4ac is positive, you'll get two solutions. Those solutions will be rational if b squared minus 4ac is a perfect square. It will be irrational if it's not. Those are just tips, and later on we will learn why that's the case. We have one more example I want to do with you. Don't confuse this question with something that's a max min, because it's not. Two numbers have a sum of 46 and a product of 396.75. What are the numbers? It's a word problem. So what we want to do is set up an equation relating the numbers. Well, equations. I would, until you get really, really good at this, I would avoid using x or y anywhere. Okay. 
So there is an equation relating the two numbers. And the only problem is you can't solve this equation because it's got two unknowns, but here's another equation. The sum is 46, the product is that. So we are going to solve this equation as a system, or this problem, as a system of equations. I'm going to put, we'll do it the other way around. I'm going to put A equals 46 minus B into that bottom equation. So A is 46 minus B. We're going to put that right here. How do I solve this? Well, again, you're going to get better throughout this unit. Do you see that this will be a quadratic equation? Why is it going to be quadratic? There's be a b squared. So I'm going to expand this out. 46b minus b squared equals 396.75. This is an equation. There is no y. I always recommend zeroing your quadratic equation so that the quadratic term is positive. Meaning, I want to move everything to the right-hand side. Positive b squared minus 46b plus 396.75 is the equation I can use to find b, one of the two numbers. Okay, how are we going to solve that? We're going to imagine that this is y equals. We're going to graph it and solve it graphically. So I'm going to plot the graph of x squared minus 46x plus 396.75. Now, you understand that that 396.75 um, is up quite high, right? But here's the other thing I want to point out. Do you agree, since the two numbers add to give 46, they're, they're smaller than 46? So b is a number between 0 and 46. That tells me what to set my window settings at. I might go to my table now and just explore like 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. Explore what y is doing there. At the beginning, where x is 0, y is like almost 400. And by the time I get to 46, y is back to almost 400. In between, it goes down to about negative 125. Believe me, when you find out how to solve this algebraically, you will not want to do this. But this tells me if I'm going to go from 0 to 46, I should probably go from about negative 200 to 400 for y. And now something that is so subtle. I have no doubt you can find the x-intercepts. I'm going to calculate them for us or find them. You can do so as well. The first x-intercept is 11.5. Do you get 11.5? Okay, so b is equal to 11.5. What's the second x-intercept? Thirty-four point five. I want to make something really clear, and this is subtle. These are not the two numbers. This is only B. 
I mean, it might be that they turn out to be the two numbers, but this is only B. B is this, or B is that. What is A? Well, A is 46 minus B. So if B is 11.5, you have to take 46 minus 11.5. Now, what do you get? Well, you happen to get 34.5. Okay? You happen to get that. But A is not 34.5 because this is the other x-intercept. That's not how it works. This is a separate answer to the question. That A can be 34.5 and B can be 11.5. Or this is a solution. They happen to be the same solution, but they're not always going to be. Once again, everybody, and this is subtle, this is not A. It's a B intercept. <coughs> you really have to roll that around in your head. The big thing that we learned today is how to solve these equations graphically. And I hope I've helped you out with that B squared minus 4AC because it will tell you whether you're going to even get solutions or not. It will tell you whether those solutions are going to be radicals, or irrational in other words, or rational, fractions. Any questions with that last example?